Welcome back to this I24 News Evening Edition. This is One on One. Rebecca Magor is Assistant Professor of Theatre at Rowan University in New Jersey. This year, she is a Fulbright Scholar studying theatre of, of the Arab world. Her uh, forthcoming book, Tahrir Plays and Performance Texts from the Egyptian Revolution, was recognized with a fellowship from the National Endowment for Arts. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. So the last uh, maybe one of the last times that we heard about the Palestinian uh, theater was uh, when uh, the pioneer in this uh, in this uh, thing was uh, uh, Giuliano Mayer that was murdered in uh, Jenin uh, a few years ago and since then it seems like it disappeared the theater, the theater in Palestine because it was a very um, important project for Giuliano Mayer and uh, it kind of uh, singled a uh, new era in uh, the Palestinian society, their, their way to actually say what they have to say. And did it, did it end? Oh, no, no, not at all. There's a very vibrant theater scene, uh, both Palestinian theater scene, both within the state of Israel as well as within uh, the, the occupied territories. I think perhaps the attention from the press may have disappeared, but that doesn't mean that uh, the theater artists are not continuing to create very important works. How come the attention just uh, disappeared? The media attention? <laughs> well, that was a very high-profile story. Um, the theater artist was murdered. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there's a tendency for uh, negative, violent stories to be covered um, to a great extent, but perhaps there's not a tendency to cover um, the day-to-day -day, uh, important works that theater artists do all over uh, this region. What, uh, what are the subjects that you're dealing, uh, that the Palestinian theater is dealing with? Well, there's a broad range of topics. Um, I think one of the important things that theater gives us is it allows us to really uh, enter into the internal dialogue of a society. So, um, and the work that I'm doing both in looking at Egyptian theater and uh, in Palestinian theater, you have a chance to see what kind of challenges these societies face inside and what's the internal dialogue. And what is the internal dialogue in <laughs> Egypt and in the Palestinian territories? Um, well, uh, actually, I was just in Cairo last week uh, to interview playwrights uh, who are going to be part of my forthcoming book for the anthology of contemporary Egyptian drama. And um, the themes are really varied. And in fact, what's surprising is that we have a lot of things in common. We meaning, um, I'm, I'm, an Amer I'm an American and, theater artist, so I'm yes. talking about US theater and my US uh, audiences. We have a lot in common um, with, with this society when we look at it through the lens of the theater. So there's issues of, um, women's rights, the status of women, the status of religion, conservatism versus liberalism, modernity versus tradition. There's uh, themes of uh, generational conflict, so youth versus uh, the older generations. You know, in, in the old days, uh, back, like even 20 years ago, I remember as a child seeing uh, Egyptian movies <laughs> and uh, even the Egyptian uh, theater. And I used to see much uh, more liberal uh, theater open. You can even see like um, uh, love scenes uh, in the Egyptian uh, theater, kissing, hugging, something that they, it's n doesn't exist today, although we're... Uh, well, that, that's not true. <laughs> the, the theater scene in, in uh, Cairo, is uh, in Egypt in general, is very diverse. It's thriving. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I think, maybe when, when we, when at least when a U.S. Um, audience thinks about Cairo or thinks about Egypt, they don't immediately think, what's the theater like there? Um, so, you know, as I said, I was just there last week and I saw some wonderful productions, uh, both in the state theater, which is, you know, the state-sponsored theater and the independent theater. And uh, they're, they're doing incredibly experimental and, and prov provocative things through their theater. Um, there's actresses who are veiled. There are actresses who are unveiled. Uh, there's a really broad diversity of writers. 
um, they're they're represented very much in the, in the anthology. So you have writers who are coming from. Uh, who are Muslims, who are Christians, who are coming from Cairo, who are coming from the provinces, um, established artists and, and emerging artists. And I think that, you know, just to go back to, you know, what, what do they actually write about? So I talked about all these themes that we have in common. Yes. Um, but I think one of the things that uh, is striking about a, a Egyptian theater is that that we in America, at least, have a very difficult time, uh, or we struggle to address in our theater, are issues of inequality. Yes. And the, this is really central to all of the works that I've um, certainly that selected for the anthology, but um, that I see that I've seen when I when I was there. So I'm talk when I talk about inequality, I mean economic disparity, and I mean talking about issues of poverty and class. So again, this is something that we 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 don't feel comfortable with um, in the U.S. in our theater, and we in many ways try to avoid this. And and because when, life is beautiful, and it has to have a we don't happy have ending. Class in America, right? <laughs> uh, so I think uh, what what's what's amazing this project has really showed me is that American audiences actually respond really well to Egyptian theater, uh, they to Arab theater in general uh, when it's when we actually. Do present it um, in the states. We don't, we don't present a lot of drama and translation in America. But last year, I directed a tour of one of the plays in the anthology, which is called *Comedy of Sorrows*, which is a play that that was written really just you know two months after the first stage, um, the January 25th revolution in 2011. Yeah. And uh, one of the main characters, her name is Doha. She is a very privileged, um, educated young woman, really part of what in the States we would call the 1%, someone who's very distanced from her, from most of the people in her country. And it's through the experience of uh, joining the protest that she comes to, to know her own people um, and to understand uh, the, the lack of dignity that they suffer because of the poverty in the country. And this was something that American audiences very much related to the you know the one percent versus the ninety nine percent and the and the economic divides. So something that was very uh, resonated very powerfully for them. When you first came into these projects, mm -hmm. were you uh, held by stereotypes? Was I held? <laughs> well, I think what what theater really does for us again, going back to this issue of internal dialogue, is it dispels stereotypes. So. so you know, I came, I, I mean, I'm an American theater artist. I work in the States. I don't just work on, on Arab theater or Middle Eastern theater. I direct all kinds of productions. Um, and, and my main focus really is the, the American theater audience and how can I, I reach them and how can I get my audience to think about the issues that we need to think about in order to make our society better. And I think that examining Palestinian theater, Egyptian theater, Middle Eastern theater in general is a great way to, to, to help us to do that within the American theater. So I, I remember the first time that I experienced um, Egyptian theater. I was, I was in college on a semester abroad in Egypt, and I went to the theater in Cairo uh, one night, and I saw this production called uh, Mama America, or Mama America, which starred uh, the very famous Egyptian actor, Mohammed Subhi. Yes. And uh, I, I thought it was just the most cutting edge, provocative theater I had ever seen. And it was, um, there was quite a cynical portrayal of the United States in this play, uh, which I wasn't used to because I think I was used to seeing America portrayed as this beacon of hope and, and liberty. Uh, and in this particular production, uh, America or America was this very funny, wealthy matron with silly hats, and um, she was a character who was very interfering, of course, symbolizing yes. America as, as an interfering power in the region. So this was very striking for me. But perhaps it was even... So maybe the Egyptian theater is held by stereotypes that they have on... About Americans? On, about Americans. But, but see, that's the thing that's really complex about Egyptian theater, is that, of course, there was criticism um, uh, of the United States through this character, but the, the thing that this play was more critical of was Egyptian society itself. So the, the play, like so much of Egyptian theater, is very self-critical, very introspective. 
um, and and also it was just hysterically funny. Um, so I, I left that experience saying, you know, how can we have this kind of theater in the United States? How can we create American theater that's um, as entertaining, but as uh, critical and, and as um, intelligent? You know, you're talking about um being provocative, and we just heard about uh, just uh, during the revolution about Bassam Yusuf, uh, the John Stewart, uh, the Egyptian John mm, Stewart, mm -hmm. who was banned and censored uh, by the Egyptian uh, government, not to actually go out and say what he had to say. So, it may it's is it more open in, in in the theater than on TV? So there are various kinds of theater in Egypt. Uh, there's state theater. Um, there's uh, independent theater. So state theater really gets its funding from, from the government. From the, government. It, the independent theater gets, it's very complex, so I'm oversimplifying, but the, the, the quote unquote independent theater gets some of its funding. Um, then there's, uh, I guess perhaps you might call it private theater that gets m most of its funding from foundations. Yeah. So that, you know, foundations abroad. So these different types of theater go through different levels of censorship. Uh, it's my understanding that the government theater, that these productions actually have to send in a videotape of the performance to the censor office, um, censorship office. Um, the independent theater just has to send a script in. And the, the foundation theater, I, I think that sometimes they are able to really completely go around the censorship. So you, you know, it, you would be surprised uh, at what's discussed on stage in Cairo, in, and, and not just in Cairo, um, but in other uh, areas of the country that are performing. You know, this revolution was uh, dominated by uh, the young people. Uh, in Egypt uh, almost, uh, and we know that this is a new generation, this is a generation that is more open to the world. And as young people, you know, young people are also concerned, uh, concerned about um, the relationship between a man and a woman, uh, sex, uh, um, uh, let's say, the, the, like you said, women's rights. Uh, do you see this? Will you see a sex scene on stage? Will they actually have this discussion about uh, should you have sex before you're getting married or not? Is it something that you encountered? Specifically talking about sex? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, um, I've been really focusing, this project is really focusing on um, plays that are either directly related or tangentially related to the revolution, but there are definitely romantic uh, relationships. Uh, there, I, I, I mean, I would like to just dispel the stereotype of Egyptian theater being, you know, entirely only men on stage and not allowing women. No, of course, women. it's a different, you know, it's a different society. It has its own rules and its own way of life. But and sex, of course, in the Muslim uh, society is not something that is open. But well, it is well, a discussion I mean, in the art world. Not not all of the artists are are coming from Muslim backgrounds. Some of them are Christian. Christians, of course. Um, some of them are atheists. <laughs> some of them are very liberal. Um, so there's really Really, a diversity uh, of voices within the Egyptian theater, and I guess what I would what I would like to stress is that um, again is this issue of, of um, internal dialogue. So, what is really pre what is the preoccupation of this society, and how can we see that through the theater? And uh, you said something about how the revolution was dominated by the young, and and I think actually that. Um, not, it's not entirely accurate, and that's something that you, you learn when you, when you read these plays and when you see these plays, is that, of course, young people were a very important part of the revolution, Twitter, Facebook, social networking, but there would never have been such mass protests, such powerful, um, you know, swaths of the population participating in these demonstrations. Um, had it not been for this intergenerational participation. And in fact, um, you know, again, while the Western media was very, really loved covering the, these young, um, very hip, tech-savvy um, people who were, who would, really did contribute a great deal to the revolution, you, you know, you have to realize, of course, that um, probably the, the vast majority of the people in the demonstrations I don't necessarily know that they had internet at home. Um, they also, there was also, um, you know, 
as far as the a a age was concerned. There were people of all ages and all backgrounds who were part of the revolution. And that you see through the characters in the plays. So, um, you know, in, in one of the plays, uh, Comedy of Sorrows, you have, uh, again, you have this one wealthy character, privileged woman, who, who's quite um, out of touch with her own people. And you have two other characters who um, kind of discover the, the protest by accident. They're very, very poor. They're living in, in what's called the, the, the city of the dead. Yeah, it's basically uh, what you're saying is that uh, theater in Egypt and the Palestinian territories is actually concerning human problems and uh, our problems as a society. Thank you very much, Rebecca, sure. for, for uh, this uh, uh, conversation uh, with us. And uh, thank you for coming to our studio. And thank you, our viewers, for being with us tonight. Tomorrow we'll be here at the same time, same place from the Jeff Report. Have a great night.